Welcome back to Your 365 Coach. Today, we've got an exciting topic, Microsoft Loop, and how we can use the brand new capabilities to be able to manage projects in a better way and have that one app that seamlessly brings together content across different Microsoft 365 apps. And to demonstrate those new capabilities in Microsoft Loop, I'm gonna go and create a brand new project and talk you through capabilities ranging from the new meeting notes capability to improved planner synchronization and even bringing content in from Trello and Jira. So as always, if you really like this content, we would love it if that like button and also subscribe to our channel to find more great content like this every week for you to become a productivity superstar. And not only that, you'll even find a link in the video description to get a free Microsoft 365 ebook to expand on your skills. Anyway, let's dive into Microsoft Loop and start to see all of these brand new capabilities. Now, when it comes to starting a project, you may well have a meeting to discuss the ideas of that project, but at which point you won't actually have a workspace to go and create all your content or even a project plan right. So you may want to use your notepad or an app like OneNote, but Loop, you can actually do much the same. Here, I've landed on the web page for Loop, which is loop.microsoft.com. And here I can go and create an ideas page without ever going to create that initial workspace because ultimately maybe this project will never come to fruition. Now to achieve that, all I need to do is click on the ideas option on this page. Then I can click on that purple add ideas page. When I click that, we'll then have a loop page open, which is not yet associated to a workspace. So it's currently only visible to you. Now on here, we can also speed things up you may have a template or something you want to work towards and that might take you five minutes to draft up in one of your notes. But in Loop, we can use a project brief amongst other templates. When I select project brief, I get an automatic page template that I can use to begin creating content. And that includes Loop components, such as the team members table, which effectively is a Loop table. We also have project deliverables, which are tasks, which then sync into Microsoft To Do. So your page here can become very powerful. So let's begin by creating some content on this page and get this project idea flushed out with the ideas we've got for our project. So there we have it. We now have some content all to do with our project being a next gen smartwatch, but we can also make visual changes such as at the top, we've got this kind of colored icon here. I could click on the update cover and I could again look for a watch to make it more similar to what we're going to actually going to achieve. Here, I'll just mark it through on this watch here and then click on update. And here I have a new cover. Now with this information, as you can see, I've added a project overview. I've also added goals and the team members into the loop table. But as yet, I haven't done the project deliverables because I would probably do that inside of a plan. So what I'm going to go do is highlight it and then delete it from my loop page. Relevant links, well there isn't any at the moment, so I'm going to go and delete that as well. So we now have our project brief as an idea that's currently only shared with me. And not forgetting we do this for any type of idea you come up with. These loop pages can be stored and have these components ready to be shared later. But ideas is a great way to throw that information on a canvas based approach that you can use later, as we'll shortly see. So now we have our idea, we're probably gonna consider that this project is now gonna become live. It needs a workspace, right, to share content with my colleagues. But how can we take our idea into a workspace? Now, do we have to create it all again? No, we don't have to do that. Instead, let's head into Loop again. So at this point, I want to create a workspace rather than just this ideas page. Now I can go back into Loop and select Loop at the top. I can go on the workspace tab and click add new workspace. So on this page here, we can begin to create our new loop workspace. Now I'm gonna be naming it very similar to what we did with our project brief. So we're gonna go ahead and type in that here, the next gen smartwatch. And we also know that internally, we're gonna be supported on this project by my colleague Nestor, and we're gonna be supported by my colleague Adele. So I can go ahead and add those people into my workspace straight away so they can access it and share content. And once we click on continue, as we can see, Loop will also check for suggested content. This could be Word documents, PowerPoints, or even Loop ideas. And as we can see, it's picked up the project brief that I've just created for this smartwatch. That saves me having then to add it manually later on. If 
if you've got multiple ideas, you can just bring them into your workspace when you're ready to. So let's go ahead, left click and click on create. As we can see, we've now got access into our workspace. And on the left hand side, we also see a link for the project brief for the next gen smartwatch. Alongside, we then see a brand new untitled page to begin creating more content. And this then is a great way to begin building out more content in your project and to use this workspace to capture all the content. And as we're gonna see later, start building it out and showing you others having one consistent place that all of this loop content lives in. If you're enjoying this tutorial, then you're gonna love one-to-one -one and group coaching sessions delivered by me and your 365 coach. So imagine getting personalized step-by-step -step guidance for you or your team when it comes to using Microsoft 365. So if you're interested, head to the link below and in the video description, and I look forward to seeing you in one of those sessions and driving you to the next level when it comes to using Microsoft 365 apps. So now let's consider how we could also begin sharing and also validating this content. Here is that project brief page I created, which is now part of our workspace and our project overview. Now, normally what we'd have to do is take this into a Word document, put it on an email and share it with others to get feedback to make sure this project overview makes sense. But what if we could take just this part of the text, share it with others and have it synced back into loop and anywhere else it's referenced. So all of those updates are kept in sync. Well, that's exactly what I want to do now. So what I'm gonna go and do is highlight our project overview. I could then click on this left hand side and then I can create a loop component. So now we have our loop component, we can also begin sharing it with others to get that in all important feedback. So let's go and click copy component in the right hand side of this component. And as we can see, I'll choose a default here, which is company wide can edit. But if you want to make a change, click on settings and you can also update that for people you choose. So maybe just defining the people by name and the edit or view rights that they would have to this particular component. But we're going to go ahead and just use that company wide link. So let's head into Teams now and I want to get some feedback from the project team. So let's open up Teams and create a message straight to Nestor and Adele to get feedback on this. So I'm now in Teams and as we can see in the top, I've now added multiple people into my chat message being Nestor and Adele. What I can now do is go to type a message and paste in that link that's been generated inside of Loop. And as if by magic, I now have that project overview and I can now go hit on the send button inside of that Teams chat and my colleagues being Nestor and Adele can click into this and make live changes that sync straight back into that Loop page and that Loop component. So in this part, I might actually want to add additional text or remove some. So maybe the launch date, 1st of September, is a bit optimistic. Let's change that to a 2024 delivery date instead of 2023. Now with that change, it will sync straight back to where the content originally came from. So if I go back into my loop area inside of the browser tab, we will see that change is immediately shown December 2024. So a great way there to take content and share it inside of Teams. But what if you're a fan of Outlook? Instead of Teams, you like to message people, right? Well, let's do much the same. Let's head into Microsoft Outlook. So here we are in Outlook, drafting a new email to Nestor and Adele. Now again, do I have to then paste this content in its plain text form, get those emails back, refine it, and then update loop? No way. We'll just paste in our component again. And as if by magic, there we go. I can even see that I've currently got Loop open in a separate tab and it's highlighted where others are working on that change. So I can go ahead and send this email and when someone opens it, they can change this in real time and sync it straight back into Loop. Could out all of those long email threads when it comes to getting feedback and things like project specs and other information. Now you may be wondering, well does that also go as far as the other components and the other content that we have on our Loop page? Well, let's go back into Loop and check that out. So we have a team members table and we also have goals. And in much the same, I can highlight this content for team members, click on the left-hand side, select Create Loop Component. And once again, on the right-hand side, I can now go ahead and copy the component. So with that component copied, I can once again go into Outlook or Teams and then share that to have it refined and sync back in place. And if you don't believe me, let's head back into Outlook and we'll have a quick line break on the project overview and then we'll paste in the team members. 
And there we have it. We have our loop team members be able to update it in place and even add new rows for the team members. That's a real easy way to use loop components and share that content in Teams and Outlook and have that feedback all synced back into that loop workspace content, saving you a whole heap of time. So now I know what you're thinking. Well, there's no plan. So what are we going to do around planning? Well, Loop also connects into Planner and Microsoft to do in two separate ways. Now, if in this scenario, you may have a more complex, effectively plan elsewhere, and we'll cover that a little later. But in terms of Planner, let's go and create ourselves a new plan using Microsoft Planner. So here I am in Planner, nice and easy via the web browser, task.office.com. We're going to go and create a new project management template plan. I'm going to give it a name here, and that name will, of course, reference the smartwatch. We can then, of course, add to an existing group, but I also want to mark this as a private plan. It's going to be created as a brand new plan and group. So here, I'm going to go and create my new planner. Now, planner works just like you've seen before. This template actually comes with pre-configured buckets and tasks, saving us a bit of time. But of course, this is great, but I don't want to be able to go to another tab and another place to maintain the plan. So how can I get this inside of our loop workspace where my project team reside? Well, I can easily show you how to do that. What we can do is click on the free dot menu and we can then put copy link to plan. Now with that copied, let's head back into our loop workspace. This time we'll be going to our untitled page and let's call this project planning. Now here we can begin typing some content and I'm not gonna start typing anything. Instead, I'm gonna go and paste that link that I took from Planner. And as if by magic, Planner is now integrated and synchronized into our Loop workspace. All of these tasks are coming straight from the plan. I can click into them and so can other team members update them and then keep them all in sync. Now this isn't effectively a kind of version one of the Planner integration. So the security of this component is not effectively synchronized with your Loop workspace or effectively as a Loop component you can copy. Now, if that makes no sense, don't worry. Very simply, it just means that you have to click on the members area and ensure that the security of your plan mirrors up to your Loop workspace. So in this scenario, of course, I would add in Adele, who's also working on this project, and I would also add in Nestor. That means that when they then go to this loop page in our workspace, they can see this plan. They can go into it, make changes and sync it all back. So planner integration is completely possible and getting a plan in Microsoft Planner into loop, into its own dedicated page, getting it all synchronized. So I mentioned earlier, what if you've got a plan elsewhere? And maybe that's not in Microsoft Planner. Well, Loop also allows us to synchronize with Trello and Jira. So if you have those actual plans, i.e. those boards in Jira or Trello, you can do much the same as what we've just shown in Microsoft Planner. Of course, it requires a Trello account and that separate service, but we can integrate that inside the Microsoft Loop. So let's go ahead and create a new page where it can actually be connected to our Trello board. So we now have a new workspace page called Trello. I'm going to do is click on the forward slash to open the discovery menu, scroll to the bottom, and I can select from Jira or Trello. Now I'm going to connect to Trello, so I'm going to connect to Trello here, and I've already been authenticated, and I've just done that prior to opening up this actual dialog. It then shows me all the boards I have access to in Trello, and here is Project Zero Tasks. I can click on Import, and then import that board from Trello into Microsoft Loop. Now this again is a two-way sync same capability as Planner. What we can do is actually click into these and we can update things like the security to accounts inside of Trello. We can add descriptions, start dates, and we can even go and create new tasks in here and drag them onto our board. Everything gets synced back in place. Now again, the security is important. Of course, they would need Trello accounts on the other side to make sure that the relevant team members in your Loop workspace can access this Trello board. So yes, if you're using Trello or Jira, you can bring it into Microsoft Loop, keep it up to date and keep it in sync. Let's not forget how many meetings do we have on projects, a number, and we wanna keep that all in sync. Now what we could equally do is go and create a new page inside of your Loop workspace and select at the bottom, meeting notes. That'll give you a meeting notes template to begin actually inputting the content during your meeting which is absolutely fine, 
but also it's not that integrated inside of Teams. So instead, we can use the power of these loop components and loop meeting note directly inside of Microsoft Teams. So all we need to do is open up the Teams app and go ahead and look to schedule one of our meetings from your calendar. So here I am inside of Teams on that calendar and I can go and create a new meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of detail into this meeting. So with that done, you'll see an option now in the bottom for add an agenda others can edit. If you click into that, this will now create you a loop component. And that loop component will give you the ability to set the agenda, meeting notes happening live in the meeting, and also follow up tasks that sync straight into Microsoft To Do. So let's go ahead and add an agenda. So I can go ahead and send this meeting invite out, including the agenda and the other points when they capture inside of the meeting. And now it's time to join the meeting. And like any other meeting from Outlook or in Teams, we can join by the meeting link. At the bottom though, inside of Teams, we can also see those points on the agenda. So let's go ahead and join the meeting. And here's the big difference. On the right hand side, we immediately have a notes tab open. We see the agenda, we can add meeting notes during the meeting and even follow up tasks. So that means that what we added into our meeting invite can actually be updated live inside of the meeting and sync straight back into Microsoft Loop. So let's go ahead and add a few of those meeting notes. So with those meeting notes added, we can also check off the points in the agenda. So let's go ahead and mark them all. They were all covered in the agenda. But there's also gonna be a follow-up task. Let's click on follow-up task. And also Adele needs to go ahead and get the finances arranged for this project. So we'll go ahead and just put a task name as finances and we're gonna assign it into Adele. So let's go ahead and select Adele in here and put a due date of effectively a couple of weeks time. Now that itself will also synchronize as we can see inside of Microsoft To Do. So you can see opening To Do. So that will effectively sync straight into the Microsoft To Do for Adele, meaning the task is allocated to her and she has it on a to-do list. So what happens then when the meeting ends? Well, let's go ahead and end this meeting. And here I am back in that meeting invite. And if we scroll down, we see the agenda points we covered, the meeting notes, and also the follow-up tasks that has been also allocated to Adele and synced into Microsoft To Do. Very helpful, but can we also capture that in our workspace? And the answer is yes. So let's go into Microsoft Loop, as we can see here, and we actually see the recent tab we're going to select meeting notes. I want to filter them by the meeting notes. And there is our smartwatch project catch up. Left click into that. And there is all of our meeting notes stored inside of loop. Now click on add to workspace on the left. Select the next gen smartwatch, which is our workspace. And that now will be added as a link into our workspace. And of course, the security, if you provided access to this loop page, any of the components will also synchronize across. If I open the workspace, there is our smartwatch. And here again is the agenda, meeting notes and follow-up tasks, all available to us inside of your Microsoft Loop workspace. So it's simple to bring in your meeting notes and bring them back into your Loop workspace when you're finished. And there we have it, a number of features that you could use in Microsoft Loop to bring into your next project. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't mean you have to go and uninstall Microsoft projects and build in your plans inside of Loop but rather what you've now learned, you can take into the areas that you think is most valuable to manage your project or piece of work in the workplace. Whether they're meeting notes or taking text and sharing it in Outlook and Teams to get feedback or creating a workspace to keep everything together, even if it's just for you and sharing those individual components where necessary. There's a huge variety of ways you could use this inside of your day-to-day -day workflow to improve how you work. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, we'd love it. Hit that like button. And don't forget to follow and subscribe to find more great content every week to help you become a productivity superstar. We'd also be interested in the comments to see if you're going to use any of these capabilities and your thoughts. And otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.